Hey YouTube, Matt and Roy back once again. Bet quite a few guys are wondering where I've been. Well, I just decided to take a little break from YouTube for a week or so. But I'm back and you'll see some videos coming up pretty steadily within the next few days. But for today, I have this for you. Um, I was doing some work for a client and basically they bought two new computers, a desktop and a laptop. And after I transferred their data, I wound up with their old system. A few of you guys might remember this. I actually owned one of these computers uh, a while back. Um, I think back in 2010 is when I picked mine out. And I also picked a few of these up at the uh, Goodwill a few weeks ago. Well, unfortunately this one is suffering with the same problem that the ones I got from Goodwill did. And this is the exact same model. It has a bad motherboard. It will boot, it will attempt to boot, but then it'll just go to a blue screen. And basically what will happen is when I try to run any kind of diagnostic tests on it, they'll run for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then the computer will just restart itself. Um, very common problem with these HPs. So what I've decided to do with this is basically part it out. And this does have some really good parts still in it, uh, including a uh, one terabyte hard drive. So, I'll just go over with you guys and show you what this computer has in it. Right up top here you can see it has the 12-in-1 memory card reader. Under that we have the dual layer SATA DVD burner. This is just a blank expansion bay. And if you pull this down, you have your audio in and out ports or microphone headphones and two USB 2.0 ports. And you can see some of the stickers on the bottom. This is uh, Windows 7 capable, running an AMD processor, and has uh, a built-in NVIDIA graphics. Now, turning to the side here, I'm going to try to zoom in here. Hopefully you guys can read this okay. There we go. Has a AMD Athlon uh, X, uh, 2 X4 360 or 630 quad core processor. Uh, very good CPU, but I was almost thinking about maybe putting this in the uh, Phantom triple core system I have, but I still say that's a little bit better processor because it's a Phenom versus the Athlon. So I think I'm going to leave that alone. 6 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I do definitely have a use for this. 1 terabyte hard drive. The DVD burner, and this apparently has the light scribe technology. Built onto this motherboard was an NVIDIA GeForce 9100 uh, graphics card. Decent card, I mean, not really for gaming, but it, for watching HD video, you know, it was just fine. And of course, genuine Windows 7 home premium 64 uh, bit. And looking here, this looks to be a 2010 model system because it came with Norton Internet Security 2010. So let's go ahead and open this up, and I'll show you guys what everything looks like inside. These cases are kind of odd. You have to open them up from the left side. Usually things are opposite. Seems like it's opposite to me anyway. All right. Looking inside, we have a semi-dusty computer here. Up top here is where the DVD uh, burner sits. These actually use this, these clip systems. There's no screws, so the, this is basically a toolless design. Not my favorite because if you move these around too much, the uh, tension wears out and the drives won't stay in place. My first HP like this had a big problem with that. Over here, I'll bring you guys a little closer. We have a Best Tech 300 watt power supply. Um, not my favorite power supply, but I probably will hold on to it. I'm going to take it apart later, make sure all the caps are good, uh, and run a few tests on it. As long as it tests good, then I'll save that for another time. Panning down here, uh, we have the hard drive right in here. This is a Western Digital green drive, one terabyte. And this one is definitely going to be going in one of my computers. Um, the next part of this video, I think what I'm going to do is try to image 
uh, the drive on my AMD Phenom computer onto this because that was only a 320 gig drive and this is a one terabyte. And even though this is a green drive, performance should be very similar to the drive I have in that one because it's an older 320 uh, gigabyte SATA 1 drive and this is of course a SATA 2, may even be a SATA 3 drive, I'm not sure. Right here we have uh, 6 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. And then, of course, underneath here is the AMD Athlon 2 uh, quad-core processor. And that's pretty much it for this computer. So I'm going to go and strip this down, and then we'll go ahead and see what we're going to do with the parts. So stay tuned, everybody. One other thing that really, really gets me upset with uh, HP lately is the fact they're using torque screws instead of regular Phillips head on, on their consumer systems. They used to do this all the time with their business grades uh, desktops, but this pretty much doesn't let the regular user with, with just a Phillips head screwdriver um, service their computer. And this has been a major problem with them for a couple of years now. And I just wanted to add that in here. So anybody listening from HP, regular Phillips head screwdrivers, not Torx. All right, everybody, now that I have the uh, system stripped of everything that I want to keep out of it, I just thought I'd show you again what this motherboard looks like. And I'm going to zoom in in a minute and show you. It's a Pegatron motherboard. Let's see if the camera will pick that up. There we go. It's a Pegatron model M2N78-LA. Now, as far as I know, this is the only one of the motherboards that was a major problem. So, for any of you guys looking to pick up a used HP system like this, make sure it does not have this motherboard because I have, these are very prone to failures. And when I did the research online, what it was telling me is that it's mostly because of bad solder joints. Now, some of you guys might be brave enough to re-solder the entire board but I don't have the time or the patience to, to try something like that and in my opinion if solder joints are going bad this soon after the computer was built then there's other major issues going on quality wise with this particular board so again stay away from this board you can pause the video if you want to write down that uh, name and model number but definitely do not buy a computer with this board in it All right. And here are all the parts I was able to salvage out of this particular computer. We'll start with the memory. This is Samsung and they're two gigabytes each, uh, PC 1066 and again DDR3, so I got three sticks of that for a total of six gigabytes of RAM. Here is that Western Digital Caviar green drive model WD 10 EADS this is the optical drive out of the system it's just their standard uh, Hewlett Packard DVD burner drive with light scribe I don't know how well the camera's picking that up and if you look at the bottom here it is manufacturing date of January of 2010 which is right over here And then we have the fan heat sink. Fan is still in good shape. No bearing noise, still spins freely. Just, just needs a good cleaning, so I'll be holding on to that. The Best Tech 300 watt uh, power supply, which I will take apart later to verify that it is good, but for now I'm just going to go ahead and keep it, and I'll probably be doing that either later on today or tomorrow. And then probably one of the best parts out of this, the AMD Athlon 2 X4 quad-core CPU uh, running at 3.2 gigahertz. And it's the uh, three, uh, 630 model. So these are all the parts I was able to salvage out of the system. And what I'm going to do next is go ahead and perform some upgrades on my current computer. So be back in just a minute, everybody. All right, now on the bench I have my HP uh, Phenom Quad.
a triple core system out, we'll go ahead and perform a couple of upgrades on here. Very first upgrade I want to do is add some more RAM. And if you guys can see right there, right now it has four gigabytes of RAM. That's two, uh, two gigabyte uh, each sticks that are in there now. Now I'm not going to replace those because actually these are both running at the exact same speed. They're both 1066 megahertz uh, chips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add two of these two gigabyte sticks I have. It will give me a total of eight gigabytes of RAM. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Remember when you're putting RAM in, align it up first and then gently push on each side until you hear the clips. Now, it always helps to make sure it's going in the right way. And don't assume that it's the sticker is going to face the same way as the RAM that's already in there. Once you have it aligned, again, push evenly on both sides until you hear the click. That's one stick done. And two. Now, on some other boards, it's not as easy to put them in at the same time. What you want to do is put even pressure on each side until you get it most of the way in. And then if you still don't feel a click, give a gentle push on each side until the until it clips in properly and you won't go you won't be ruining any RAM that way <laughs> alright so now we've done that simple upgrade so this has got double the memory in it went from four to eight gigabytes the next thing I want to do is a little bit trickier I want to go ahead and use this hard drive here instead of the one that's in there but I don't want to lose any of my data show you the problem that I'm having though is I can only have one drive in there permanently because these use special mounting screws of which I only have one set so for right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hard drive I'm going to mount it in there temporarily and we're going to go ahead and try to use uh, a Cronus true image to make a copy from of the image from this main drive to the new Western Digital Green drive so Next time you see me, I'll be in a Cronus trying to go ahead and do this. So stay tuned, everybody. All right, now you guys can see I have the new hard drive temporarily installed in there. It's going to move a little bit because there's nothing actually holding it in, but it's only going to be temporary until I have the image completed. And then I'm going to go ahead and, once that's completed, remove the old one and put this in its place. Now one thing I neglected to mention before is I do need to perform a low level format on this drive as I promised the customer that none of their data could be retrievable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll go ahead and try to image this drive. Alright everybody. Right now I'm running a extended diagnostic test. Um, I thought this drive was just good but it may not be because when I tried using um, Derek's boot nuke to uh, low level format it, it told me that this drive might have bad sectors. So I decided to use the Western Digital Data Lifeguard diagnostic tools. Right now if you see there, I'm running a full test on the drive. And let's see, it should take another couple of hours. And if this passes, I'm going to go ahead and use this utility to low level format it. I'm not saying the drive is bad. Sometimes Derek Boot Nuke uh, shoots up errors like that if there were some major sector errors on the drive, but this might be able to repair those. So I'm going to go ahead and run the program and try to repair the errors. And if that all succeeds, I'll go ahead and format it and we'll try a Cronus. So be back with you guys in a couple of hours. All right, we're 35 seconds from the end of the uh, extended test on the Western Digital 1TB green hard drive. So far, it looks good. 
we'll find out in 28 seconds whether or not we have a good hard drive or not. Alright, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Alright, it looks like it hit pass successfully so this you can see the western digital one gig uh, one gig one terabyte drive definitely passed so the next thing we have to do is go right down here and we have to write zeros which is basically a low level format so we'll go ahead and click start and please close all the programs that's fine they are click OK one more partitions may exist on this drive. Do you really, really want to erase them? In this case, yes, we do. Again, it's going to ask you, all data on this drive will be lost. I'm okay with that. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. Now it's giving me an option for a quick or a full erase. Because this was a customer's hard drive, we're going to go for the full erase, which will not only write the zeros to the first and the last million sectors, but to all of them on the drive. And we'll click OK. It should initialize in just a moment. And there we go. As you can see, the full erase takes quite a bit of time. Right now it's telling me about 11 hours, and it keeps going up. Um, this may take until tomorrow, so I'm not going to let you guys watch this because I don't have enough film in this camcorder. So once this is completed, I will be back. All right, it's going much quicker than I expected. One hour and nine minutes left to go, and all is well. All right, low-level format has been completed successfully, so we are good to go. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put in the discs for the Acronis True Image. Now, to be honest with you guys, I haven't worked with this version yet. This is 2014, so you got to bear with me here, but. This is an adventure, so we're going to go ahead and take it together. I'm just going to go ahead and start the computer. Zoom you guys back out. And we will go ahead and boot a Cronus True Image. And there we go, starting a Cronus True Image. And here we go. Okay, I don't know why my mouse isn't working, but it's like the keyboard is. Now again, what we're going to do is we're going to take the image or the data from the main hard drive, which was a 320 gigabyte Western Digital, and we're going to do a full disk image to the one terabyte hard drive, which we just formatted and verified is in good working order. I've had some success with this in the past. Uh, I, in my opinion, it usually works about 50-50. But we'll see if this new version of Acronis that I got is better. Okay. 
Now once we're here, I believe we have to go in, I'm going to bring you guys up just a bit, go into the back up. Now, let's see. Tools and utilities, here we go. I believe it is clone disk. Okay. Automatic. Now you have two options. You have the automatic. All your partitions from the source hard drive will be copied to the target hard drive. A few simple steps and your hard drive will be made bootable. Existing partition will be automatically resized to fit the target drive. Uh, let's do manual mode just so I can look at the different options here. Okay. Yes, this is the source disk, disk 1, which again is a 320 gigabyte hard drive of which 298 gigabytes are available. Now the reason I'm doing this, of course, one is to give it, give me more space, and two, this hard drive is, it, although it's not failing, is definitely showing its age, it's slowing down a bit. So that's what I want, the source disk. We'll go ahead and click next. Now. The destination disk, of course, they're only giving me one option, which is disk 2 right here. So I'll click that. And as you can see, there are no partitions on there, but that's okay. It'll make one. So now that I've selected that, we'll click Next. Now, Move Method. Uh, proportional, let's see, that's what's selected. Size of the original partitions will be respectively changed to fit the new drive. If the new drive is small, the partition will be shrunk accordingly. If the new drive is bigger, the partition will be enlarged. Uh, manual or as is. Okay, we're going to go proportional because the new hard drive is significantly bigger, so it'll go ahead and fix that automatically. So I'll click Next. Um, let me see right here. The selected disk will be restored as is. This will remain. After. Let me see real quick here. Move method. Yeah, I want proportional. I'm going to click next. The selected disk will be restored as is. Okay, so basically it's just saying that the source disk will remain the same. And let's just look in options real quick. That looks good. Alright, so we'll go ahead and proceed with this. So right now it's copying the partition. The first four steps really went through quick. And there are two options here. You can restart the computer when the option is completed or shut down the computer. I don't want to do that because I want to make sure there are no errors. So this is probably going to take an hour or so. I'm going to go ahead and let this proceed. And once everything's done, we'll be back. All right, so we have two seconds left, and look at that. The clone has been accepted. Clone disk operation successful. Go ahead and click OK. Now what I have to do is I'm going to exit out of the program. Now I have to go ahead and switch the drives around, so be back in just a minute. All right, now that the image has been copied successfully, I have to go ahead and remove the original hard drive. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect both. This one that's loose here is going to be our new drive. Again, for you guys that didn't see this, this is the Western Digital Green 1 terabyte drive. And let me see if I remember how to remove this. To remove the hard disks, you have to pull this clip that's on the side right here up, and then you can just pull the drives out. Now, the way this particular one works is it uses these very proprietary uh, screws. They're called they're guide screws that guide it right back into place. So I'm going to have to switch it over to the new drive, and we'll be right back. All right, now that I have the screws back in the new drive as you can see right here it's time to go ahead and put it where the old drive sat and you just guide it in and then push it in so you hear the click 
Now I'm going to go ahead and remove that uh, secondary SATA cable that I used because we don't need that anymore. This was only used to transfer the data from the old hard drive to the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and reattach the SATA power cable. And last but not least, fell down, is the data cable. And that is it. We're ready to go ahead and close this patient up and go ahead and try to boot it. And if all went well, this should have exactly what the old hard drive did. All right. And for the last part of this, I've taken you guys off the tripod. And the last thing to do is fire it up. So here's wishing it works. <laughs> Okay. And what it's showing me now is that it could be is a new configuration because I removed the other hard drive and as you can see it is the Western Digital 1 terabyte drive and then my two HP DVD burners. That is correct. So we'll hit F1 and see what happens. You know what, guys? It would be good to take the Acronis disc out first. <laughs> you know what? That's why we do this live, folks. Because there's always going to be an error or two. So we'll go ahead and start the computer once again. Go ahead and shut it off. Now we should have no interruptions. Oh, that's a good sign. Because remember, this drive was totally formatted, so this is definitely from the copy partition. Don't worry about that. That's my monitor telling me I'm not at optimal resolution. Oh, it is looking good, everybody. Well, what do you know? Looks like success. You can see that it is installed. Everything is booting up. Let's go into uh, properties here. The one thing I need to check is make sure all the drivers copied over properly. And it's gonna take it's gonna be a little slow the first time because you gotta remember this is a new clone. Pew's gotta get acclimated to this new hard drive. And let's see if it gives the system rating or asks me to it's probably gonna ask me to refresh it because it's seen that it's a new hard drive. And if it doesn't, yeah. It needs to be refreshed because the computer realizes that even though it's the exact same installation. It is a new hard drive, but we'll go ahead and do that in a minute. I want to go into Device Manager, make sure that all my drivers are being seen properly by Windows. It's loading up.
Looks like something's installing. Alright, and there you go. All the device drivers have been installed properly. Excellent. And it even found the Western Digital Management Drive, which I did not have before. Now it's prompting me to restart the computer because I think it reinstalled the keyboard and the mouse, but we'll go ahead and do that in a couple of minutes. If I open up the computer, as you can see, we are definitely getting the full capacity. Of course, you're never going to get the full one terabyte, but see, we have 832 gigabytes out of the 931 gigabytes available. And just to show you, I have my friend Chris's drive there too. That also has a total of 931 gigabytes. So, this I'm going to call this a success. But before I end the video, let's go ahead and refresh the index and see if we get... Avast virus database <laughs> has been updated. Avast has always got to update. We'll see if we get a better hard drive score here. All it should be doing is checking the uh, hard drive performance. But you can see they're analyzing disk performance. We were at a 5.9 before, and I'm assuming it's going to be about the same. Because even though this is a green drive and is a little bit, little bit on the slow side, the hard drive that was in there before was is about 7 or 8 years old. Yeah, it's inching up there. I just hope it doesn't go down. <laughs> Come on, it's getting there. All right, and as you can see, the disk rating stayed the same at 5.9. Couldn't ask for any better than that. And of course, unless you have an SSD, you're never going to get any better than uh, 5.9. So I'll just show you the experience is exactly the same. It's at a 5.0, and that's because of the aerial graphics for, for the video card that's in here. And just for you guys that are interested, the video card is the ATI Radeon HD5450. I am going to call this adventure a success. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.